this nation. God, that you hear the cry for our families, oh God, the cry for our lost loved ones, Lord. God, that you hear the cry of your people. Jesus, start with us, Lord. Start with me, Lord. Hallelujah. That's my cry this morning. That he will hear us from heaven. That he will open up our blind eyes to things that he's been trying to show us for a long time that we keep turning our eyes from. That he will open up our ears. That we will hear the Holy Spirit. That we will hear what the Spirit of God has to say to us this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Hear us from heaven, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus says, he says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door and I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the true vine. He is the great I am this morning. So whatever you have need of, he can meet you where you're at. Amen. He is the great I am this morning. I don't know what you need him to be, but he's able to be that today. Hallelujah. If you need healing, he's able to be your healer. If you need a touch, he's able to touch you like no one else can ever touch your soul. He's able to be your counselor this morning. Hallelujah. He's able to be your rock. And he's in the midst of his people today. If you turn with me in your Bibles this morning to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And the Lord gave me a title for this word this morning and it is. Peace be unto you. Yeah. Peace be unto you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 20. Hallelujah. Starting in verse 19. Hallelujah. Lord, you're in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, that's Sunday, the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Verse 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And said unto them, receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The disciples at this time, they were hiding because they were afraid of the Jews. And that's something they were, they were afraid of the church. That's something. We can be afraid of the church because it comes with its rules and regulations to tell you how you should obtain to be righteous in the eyes of God. And it can bound you up and lock you into a place of hopelessness and cause you to be afraid because you tend to strive to try to overcome to please God and you can't please him in our own strength. But they were afraid and the doors were shut. And it was a Sunday. Hey, it's Sunday. The doors are closed. Hallelujah. And there might be things on the outside of the doors in your life that you are afraid of. Maybe you uh, are struggling in something and you're afraid of uh, never getting a victory over it. Or maybe you're afraid of this sickness that's going around right now and the fear has gripped your heart. But praise God that you're here. Praise God for those that are watching. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ himself is in the midst of us this morning. And he's telling you this morning, do not be afraid. He's saying, fear not. He's saying, fear not. And not only is he saying, do not be afraid. I love this. He said, it says in verse um, 19 at the bottom, it says, and said unto them, peace be unto you. 
It was a group of them, but he said, peace be unto you. He didn't say peace be unto y'all. He said peace be unto you because it's a personal relationship. He's worried about you personally, what you're going through personally. And he's saying peace be unto you this morning. And there might be things that might even want to cause us to even block God off from meeting us where we're at. Sometimes we're the ones that close the door yes. to allow him to reach us. But God is able to go through every door, every burial, every wall to meet you this morning. Yes. He knows what you're going on in your family. He knows what's going on in your school. He knows what's going on in your job. And he knows what's going on in your heart. Yes. And he comes through. He didn't walk through the door. He comes. He just appears there. And he shows up and he says, peace be unto you. This morning. Yes. And not only that. He said peace be unto you. And this is why. And he shows him the nail scar prints in his hands. Yes. Hallelujah. And he shows him the, the scar in his side. Hallelujah. He said this is why you can have peace. This is why I can rejoice this morning. Hallelujah. Because of what he's accomplished on the cross for yes. me. Yes. Not because of anything that I've done, but I can have peace yes. because of what he's done. Yes. That's why we can rejoice. That's why we can have peace in this time when the world's going crazy and there's no more toilet paper. And uh, Walmart. Yes. my God, he's saying have peace because of what I've done. This is why. And the disciples, they got glad. That should make us glad this morning. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you, but that puts a joy in my heart. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for what you made available for me, Lord. I thank you, God, that I can have a peace. Hallelujah. In times of trouble. And I thank you, Lord, that it's personal. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That you know what's going on with me personally. Hallelujah. That maybe even some of our husbands or our closest friends or our wives don't even know about. He's saying peace to that storm. Peace to that situation in your life. But it's personal. I don't know what you're afraid of this morning, but the Holy Spirit is here. Jesus is in the midst, and he's saying, peace be unto you. But it's personal. Look at me. Look, at, look with me in um, the same chapter, John 20 and verse 8. It says, then went and also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher. And he saw and believed, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must raise again from the dead. Verse 10. Then the disciples went away again unto their homes. See, that, uh, that other disciple there that they're talking about, they're talking about John the beloved. John whom Jesus loved. And that's what a title. Do you guys know that you have that title this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. You have that title this morning. Hallelujah. You are the one whom Jesus loved. Hallelujah. You know, maybe some of the, the other disciples thought John was so special and maybe thought, man, look at John. Uh, Jesus, the one whom Jesus loves, you know. And we could do that sometimes to the body of Christ. You see someone that's just so excited about the love of God. And they're just because they experienced him. And we're just like, oh, look at mm, who do you think you are? But that's for all of us. Yes. John didn't obtain this. John didn't do anything to get this name. Yes. The Lord gave it to him. John, he said, the disciple whom he loved. But there wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't say the. It didn't say the disciple who loved whom loved Jesus. See, the emphasis is not on our love for God. It's not on our because our love falls short. Yes. Hello. We love someone one day and then the next day we can't stand them. Forget the next day, five seconds. Right? I'm the only one. Okay, look, Lord, you're talking to me. Our love is conditional. So the emphasis was not on the disciples' love for God, but it, the emphasis was on the love that God had for the disciples. Good. Amen. Amen. And he said, the, the disciple, and I love what John did. See, it's personal. There was a group of them there that went to the tomb. And they seen that Jesus was gone. And look at this. It says in verse 9, they didn't even know the scripture. They didn't even know. They weren't even thinking, oh, Jesus rose from the dead. They didn't even realize it. 
But John, he saw and he believed. He saw and he believed. That word saw means to, to view. It also means to, uh, to uh, see literally or figuratively. Appearance. It says to fashion or shape. He saw. See, sometimes what we believe and what we think in our minds will fashion and shape what we see. John went into the tomb and the Lord wasn't there, but because he knew the heart of his master, yeah. it was able to fashion and shape yeah. his belief. So as you fall in love with God because he loves you, it begins to shape your mind yeah. and fashion that you can see even when it looks hopeless, the Holy Spirit rises up in you and begins to let you know, believe. Yes. Because your mind has been shaped to believe. And also I love this word believe. So remember this saw was it could it fashion and shape your sight. And believe is to have faith in or upon. It says to credit. God, he, John was given Christ credit. The Lord proved himself faithful and faithful and faithful time and time again. And John believed. He gave him the credit. You ever have to give someone the benefit of the doubt? Yes. Man, I don't like doing that sometimes. And just like, nah, give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, I don't trust nobody. But <laughs> John knew. See, we men fall short. But John knew he can give the Lord the credit. Yes. Hallelujah. That he was great and mightier than death. Yes. Yes. John believed it. Yes. That he was greater. He gave him the credit. Hallelujah. Man. I don't know about you, but I don't. Um, a lot of us don't have good credit, all right, for not paying some of our bills and stuff, right? <laughs> but Jesus, man, he's always on time. Yes. Hallelujah. He's always on time. He has unlimited credit. Yes. He's never fall short. He's never failed you yet. Yes. So you can accredit him this morning. You can accredit him. Yes. John believed he saw and it fashioned in his mind to, to <coughs> believe and to have faith upon That's God good. and give him credit. It, it was able to allow him to entrust his well-being to Christ. To trust his well-being to Christ. What is, there, what is there some situation in our life? We're not trusting that God is going to have our well-being in that situation. Lord, you see what I'm going through, but God, I just, I just don't see how you're going to do it. I just can't see. I don't know. Lord, I'm not seeing you're going to be able to, to turn this around. Lord, you're not. But I'm telling you, he's able to turn it around for the glory. He's able to turn it around. What do you need him to turn around in your lives this morning? John was believing and trusting God for his well-being. The enemy would like to come and grip us with fear that we don't trust God, that he has our well-being in his hand. Man, that's hard. Even as a worship leader, even as a, I'm telling you, it's hard. Because the, the things of this world come in and our own stress and our own frustration and it blinds us to trust them with our well-being. Yeah. We always think we have a better plan. Lord, I, you know what, Lord? I kind of see this. I know how this person is going to react. Lord, you're, you're not going to open this door. So let me do this. Let me do that. And we start fixing and plotting and scheming. Help us. And we don't trust them with our well-being. Man, he has your well. It's like your kid, you know, your son and your daughter. And sometimes we can, we, you know, we, we have a hard time seeing Christ to have our well-being. Because even as your own, he said, he said in the scripture, he said, you, giving, you being man, giving good gifts to your children. How much more yes. him being our heavenly father, yes, the gifts that he has in stores for us. Yes. How much more? So John, he saw and he believed. Yes. A believer is one committed to trust. He was committed to trust his master because he knew he was the one that Jesus loved. And when you know that you're loved, you're able to trust your master. Yes. Right. You're able to trust that person. Yes. You know, when I, when I was adopted, I got adopted when I was 13. And man, I was a trip, <coughs> y'all. I was... I was bad. I just, man, you know, my parents never had any kids. Um, and, you know, we were, we were some baby kids. We were something else. And they adopted five kids at one time. They never had any kids, and they adopted. I was 13, and the youngest was five. 
and we came in that house and we just tore it up. But they loved us. <laughs> they loved us. My mom used to say all the time, she said, I used to have nice things until I got my kids. <laughs> and I mean, she had all these little trinkets and everything everywhere. And I used to feel so bad because we come flying through the house and crash, you hear a smash, and you're like, oh man. But she loved us more than those things. Yeah. But she loved us, and I was able to trust her because she loved me. She showed me. The proof was in the pudding, so to say. But it was personal. John believed. He seen them one time. John believed, and he went home. He was like, yes, I believe. And then there was another disciple with him, because it said disciples. It was John, and there was um, Peter. Peter was in the midst. And Peter, he didn't, they didn't say Peter believed. Peter just was like, man, I'm going home. Jesus, man, this is hopeless. Mm -hmm. And some of you might be here today, and you might be seeing and believing. Hallelujah. Keep going. Don't give up. Keep being encouraged. Hold on to the, the hem of his garment. Hold on to Christ this morning as he leads you and guides you. And then some of us might be like Peter. We see it and we're like, man, this is hopeless. Man, God, you're never going to turn us around. And we just say, I'm going home. Sometimes we come into church. The Lord's here. He's showing you who he is. He's speaking to your heart. He's saying, peace be still. Believe. Yes, yes. And we can even have a decision to see the Lord open our blind eyes that we can see, open our deaf ears so we can hear, or we can choose to be here and then leave and go home and nothing ever happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you have an encounter with your master, there's a decision to receive what he wants to do. In verse 11, it says, but Mary stood within the sepulcher weeping and she wept. And as she wept, she stood down and looked into the sepulcher. Mary, this was Mary Magdalene. This was Mary. Mary was um, the one who came to Jesus and wiped uh, his feet with her hair and broke the alabaster box in, um, in a place of worship. And people were looking at her like, what are you doing, you crazy woman? Can you imagine? Can you imagine just walking in the midst of somewhere and you just start using your hair, cleaning someone's foot, and just pouring out your praise on them? And they were just like, what are you doing? And so many times in our life, even when we come into the house of God, we can be broken before God and just pouring out our all and just like, Lord, I need you. See, nobody knew what Mary was going through. Amen. But Mary knew what she was going through and she was saying, I'm going to pour my life upon you, Lord. And even in the church, we can, I mean, she was a miss among believers. <clears throat> and they were looking at her foolish. But this was Mary's second time at the tomb. The first time she went. She seen the angels and she went back and she got the other two disciples. She told them, she said, look, Jesus isn't in the tomb. The angel said he's risen. He's not there. This was her second time coming back to the tomb. And in verse 12, it says, and she saw two angels in white sitting. This was her second time seeing angels. It was her second time being at that place. You know, sometimes things uh, as we walk through this life. The Lord doesn't reveal himself right away to us, yes. but we have to sometimes go again and again and again. Mary knew that her God was faithful. She knew she, and she was in a place of hopelessness. She said she was weeping and she was crying. I mean, you ever been in a place, man, you ever do that ugly cry before the Lord? Y'all know what I'm talking about? That ugly cry. I mean, it's just like you're just crying out from your heart. She, I'm pretty sure she was ugly crying. And she was like there for a second time, and she didn't leave. She, she could have left with the other two disciples, but she chose to stay. And sometimes even in your life as you come into church or wherever you come into the presence of God, we can either choose to be quick and leave from that place and not return there again. But she came a second time with her heart open before the master, and she was weeping and crying and looking at the situation. Praise God. Sometimes we have to look at it a couple times and not just be quick to walk away from. Sometimes we got to wait in the presence of God that he can touch us and show up. So she was crying in the presence of her master and in his presence. And she was just like, Lord, where are you? And verse 15, Jesus said unto her, woman, why do you weep? Who do you seek? She supposed him to be the gardener. And said unto him, Sir, if you have bore him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. 
she turned herself and said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say master. She knew the Lord's voice. See, the word of God says that the sheep knows their shepherd's voice. Yes. She knew him when she when he called her by name. He calls you by name this morning. I might not know your name. I might mess it up. But he knows your name this morning. And he's saying, Naya, come. He's saying, Robert, come. He's saying, Tr uh, he's saying, come. He knows our name and he's saying, come. And he spoke her name and she knew immediately. Do you know the Lord's voice this morning? Yes, Lord. I'm telling you that tug on your heart this morning, that's him saying, come. Yes. He's saying, come. He's saying he's calling you by name. And he called her name. You know, it's something, like I said, it's personal. When she was weeping in 15, Jesus said to her, woman, why, are, why do you weep? The Lord wasn't slow. He knew why she was crying. I'll never forget, I was in Guatemala. I was living there for six months. I was doing missions. We were working with a, a church and um, a doctor. She had her own, uh, f uh, I guess, pharmacy or stuff. And she was taking care of people for like nothing. But we would do house visits. And we would go to each house, each house, and just pour out the love of God and just be a help to people. But I'll never forget, those six months were some of the darkest times in my life. I don't know if it was because all hell was coming against me for being out there and doing God's will. But I was struggling and I wasn't getting victory, and I didn't know how to overcome. And I felt like this place was hopeless, man. And I was coming to the Lord time after time after time. Mary was here for a second time, and I was, I was coming to him, and I'm like, Lord, and it just felt like it was dead and it was without hope. And I never forget, we, um, we were living, there was a lot of uh, earthquakes going on at that time, and we lived in a tall building on the um, 13th floor. And I remember being in my bed, and I was just crying out to God, y'all. I'm just like, tears is snot, and I'm just crying out. And I'm like, Lord, you got to give me victory. Lord, you got you to do it. Lord, you know I love you. Lord, I just want to live for you, Lord. And I'm crying out, and an earthquake comes, and my whole bed just starts to shake across the floor. And now I'm like, bugged eye, like scared, like, oh, okay, Lord. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted you to hear my cry, but I didn't want you to do like that. And I mean, the whole bed just starts shaking. I'm holding on. And the Holy Spirit came to me. He said, Naya, why are you crying? Stop crying. Stop crying. I've already given you the victory. Stop crying. I've already overcome. Stop crying. I've already done it. I've already done it. Receive it. And it was like, it was like the Lord just saying, be quiet. <laughs> you know, and Jesus was saying to Mary, he said, Mary, why are you crying? I, I've, I've overcome the grave. Yeah. I've overcome. Amen. I've Praise conquered God. death. Yes. Hallelujah. Why are you weeping? Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord's saying, don't weep. He said, don't. Uh, he, you know, he bottles every single one of our tears. But he's saying, why are you crying? I've already won this for you. Receive Amen. it. Yes. Receive it. And, you know, so many times we come. And he, I love this. He said, he said, whom do you seek? He said, whom do you seek? And I, I looked up that word, uh, seek. And it's, uh, excuse me one moment. Oh, seek, it says to worship, desire, or seek after. She came in, he said, who are you seeking? Are you looking for a God that's dead? So many times we come into, I mean, we come to our problem already declaring that this thing is without hope. We don't come into the house of God expecting God to move. We don't come into the house of God expecting God to change our marriage. We don't come into the house of God to expecting to turn our lives, our, turn our children's life around, to save our loved ones. We come in seeking, but who are we seeking? Are we seeking a God that's alive? He was alive. And so we have to evaluate, man, who am I seeking? I'm not seeking a dead God. I'm not seeking Allah. I'm not seeking Buddha. I'm yes. seeking a living God this morning. I'm seeking a living God that's able. He said, who, whom are you seeking amongst the dead? And he said her name, Mary. And she knew, her vo knew his voice. And they begin to talk. And in verse 18, Mary came and told the disciples that, uh, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. 
See, after you come out sitting in the presence of the Lord and he shows up and meets you, Man, you come out with a testimony in your mouth. You come out like, man, you would not believe what the Lord told me he's going to do with my children. Man, you would not believe how the Lord told me he's going to fix this problem. You would not believe how God told me he's going to save that love when I've been praying for years. She came out with a testimony on her mouth, on her lips, because she was sitting with God. She was sitting with him, and then she had something to say. So many times, you know, we can get in our unbelief and our doubts because, you know, we are going through things. And all we can do is speak poison mm -hmm. to one another. We can speak unbelief <clears throat> to one another. Be careful what you speak to one another. Yeah. Be careful. But she came out speaking a testimony. You know what her testimony was? Is the word of God says that our testimony is the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. The word of our testimony is the blood of the Lamb. And she came out speaking that. That's how we will overcome. That's my testimony, what Jesus Christ has done. Yes. Not what have I done, what, not what I have accomplished. And that should be your testimony too this morning. And we should be shouting it from the rooftop yes. like that song. Shine a light. Amen. Let the whole world see that we're singing for the glory of God. Of the risen king. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. We're singing for the glory of the risen king. So we have one disciple. He's seen it one time and he believed. That was it. And then we have Mary. She chose to stay there until the Lord showed up and to show himself faithful. Don't be so quick to run out of the presence of the Lord. Because sometimes he wants to meet you there and yes. show you yes. his heart for you. Verse 20, and when he had so said, he showed them his hands, and he showed them his side. Let's jump to verse uh, 22. And when he had said these things, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive the Holy Spirit. It says receive. It doesn't say, uh, it says receive, and the, the word receive means to take. To take, it's an action verb. It's, it's something we have to step out in faith and do. And the Holy Spirit is there. He, he said, I'm going to leave with you the comforter. Because I'm going to prepare a place for you. But I'm going to leave for you the comforter. Do you need comfort this morning? Amen. God is here in your midst. Yes. Receive it. Grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of the Spirit. If you're not <laughs> baptized and filled with, his, with evidence of speaking in tongues, reach out and allow the Lord to, uh, uh, to fill you up in an uh, overflow. It said it's going to come out of your bellies and through your mouth like a river of living water. He sent his Holy Spirit because he knew that we were going to be in trying times. He knew that the disciples were about to be persecuted. He knew that. And he was like, look, I'm taking care of you. I got my comforter coming. Receive it. Yes. Receive it. And if, the, and if you feel like it needs to be renewed this morning, then renew it. If you need a fresh anointing, if you need a fresh touch from the Holy Ghost, he's in the midst. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, uh, the, the Holy Spirit's here right now. See that you don't miss him. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there is one more. Incident, another person that is a personal thing I want to talk about this morning. Jesus came to those disciples, but there was one that was missing. It was Thomas. In verse 24, it said, But Thomas, one of the twelve called Dimas, um, I think I'm pronouncing that wrong, was not with them when Jesus came. Verse 25, And the other disciples said, Therefore unto him we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see him in his hands and print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. It's personal. 
they were all in the same group, but uh, Thomas was saying, I'm not going to believe it, man. I mean, and we could be, the Lord can reveal things to us in our lives, but then we try to share it with somebody in Christ, and they're like, well, I don't believe that until he does it for me. That's okay. Huh. He was being honest. You know, Thomas here, he was being on, honest. A lot of times we're not honest with ourselves. <laughs> we don't want no one to know, man. I'm doubting God in this area of my life. I'm not seeing him move, so I'm doubting him. We don't, want, we don't want to talk about that's that. Good. But Thomas was honest. He said, look, man, I, that's all good and, and well for you. But until I see it, I'm not believing it. That's good. You know, God's not afraid. He's not afraid of our hearts. And, you know, he created us. Yeah. Verse 26, and it says, after eight days again, his disciples were in within. And Thomas with them. Thomas was there. You know, even if you're struggling in a place of doubt, don't neglect coming into the house of God. Yes, he said, because when two or more are gathered in his midst, he said he will be there. That's right. So don't, even if you are struggling, even if you are struggling, Amen. man, don't stop coming. Amen. Thomas was right. doubting. He didn't believe. But the next day, next Sunday, he was sitting in the pew. He was sitting in the row. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because something in his heart was pulling on him saying, keep coming, because I'm the answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Something was still calling him, telling him to come, come, come. So praise God, and when you are struggling, keep coming. Yes. If you don't understand something, keep coming. Yes. If you don't receive the Holy Spirit, keep coming. Keep showing up. Yes. Thomas was there with them. Then Jesus... The doors being shut stood in the midst. And he said, once again, he said, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. He didn't come with Thomas and say, oh, you doubted me, you stupid. No. He didn't come and say, how dare you be struggling? Do you know who I am? No, he came in. He said, peace be unto you. Wow, that's good. Amen. Peace be unto you. The Lord you sees where you're word, at this Lord. morning, and he's saying, peace be unto you, even if you are doubting that I'm able to do what I said I'm able to do. Yes. Peace be unto you. And then he said to Thomas, he said, reach hither your finger and behold my hand. Reach hither your hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Hallelujah. Be not faithless this morning. Be believing. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Be not faithless, but be believing. <clears throat> you speak truth to your circumstance. You speak truth to your family. You speak truth to your marriage. You speak truth in your job. You be believing. Hallelujah. And Jesus wasn't mad at Thomas. And the crazy thing is he quoted every single word for word. That Jesus wasn't even in the room, but he knew what Thomas said. He knew that, you know what I'm saying? You know how many times we talk trash, we talk smack about somebody or whatnot, and um, they don't know what we're saying, right? But the Lord, when we are murmuring and complaining and we're doubting and unbelieving, he knows exactly what we said. Oh, he knows. Oh, yes. Remember when Sarah was laughing and she was laughing because <clears throat> the Lord told her, you're going to have a son in your old age. She was laughing at the Lord. He heard her laugh. He hears our chuckle. He hears our, un he sees our unbelief, yes. but he's not moved. You know, he's man enough to come to you and challenge you and say, hey, put your hand, put your finger in my hand. Touch my side. I dare you. Because I, he wants to show you his love Amen. for you. He's not afraid. Amen. You know, you ever see these people, we used to go to um, this uh, prison to talk to young people. And I mean, there'd be some big kids there. And I mean, they could knock me out if I'm pretty sure they wanted to. But we would go, and it'd be all tough sitting at the table. And I used to be one of them. You know, I used to be the tough one. And I mean, I would fight. I was a fighter. I was a bully. But I was hurting. And I was big, man. At the age 13, I was this height already. So if people looked at me, and they didn't want nothing to do with me. My mom was this little itty-bitty little white lady. And she was just about this short. And she would come up to me and she'd be like, you're not too big for me to take you down. And I'd be like, mom, what you going to do? And she'd be like, and she would get me down to the floor. And she'd be like, what you going to do? And she'll sit on top of me because I was skinny. She would just sit on top of me. She's like, now what you going to do? And um, 
But we used to go into this, into this. Uh, it was, I guess, a teenager a detentional center. We would go and there'd be big kids, and then you start telling them about the love of God, and they just start melting like wax. Yeah. These little yeah. kid, these kids. I mean, they just big, big babies. They just start crying. But because someone was telling them that yes. someone loved them, loved them. despite yes. where they were at, yes. they just begin to melt. And the Lord's not afraid of your unbelief. He's telling you today. He said, "I want you to experience my love." I don't just want you to talk about it. I want you to experience my love. I want you to touch my hand. Yes, I want you to Lord. touch my side. I want you to reach out yes. and take what I've made available for you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And John did so. I mean, Thomas did so. He touched the hand of the Lord. Actually, it doesn't even say he did. It doesn't even say he did it. I don't know if he was afraid or ashamed or if he broke down in tears. I know I would have started crying. It's been times in my life that I've doubted the Lord in circumstances or situation, and I've doubted him and said, God, you're not going to do it, and he shows up and does more than I've ever believed. Yes. He, I mean, the Lord likes to Amen. show up and show out. Amen. Amen. He likes to, <clears throat> man, would you give him an opportunity to show you his love this morning? Would you give him the opportunity? John said, he answered in verse 28, and he said unto him, My Lord, my God. 29, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are they who have not seen and yet have believed. That's us. We might not have seen this, the scars on his hand or on his side, but we have seen him move in our lives. We've seen him change our hearts. And he's saying, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. It's like the sun. Someone put up the other day I read it said, you know, we might not see the sun at nighttime, but we still believe it exists. It? Right. And some of our darkest times in our lives and our hardest moments, sometimes, man, I can't see God moving and I don't understand it. But I believe that he's still alive. Yes. I believe that he's still conquered yes. death. Amen. Yes. We're not fighting from a place to receive victory. We're fighting from a place that where we already have victory. Yes, We're fighting right, to believe. Good. That's the fight, the good fight of faith. Yes. Verse 30 and says, Many other signs truly did Jesus do in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God. And that believing you might have life through his name. Hallelujah. That you might have eternal life. Yes. Hallelujah. So many times I believe with all my heart we can get focused on God changing our circumstances that we missed the relationship and the precious time with him. Mm -hmm. We can get so focused on God, what are you going to give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But we don't seek the giver. Don't miss that because God's going to turn it around. God's going to bless you no matter what. But don't miss the giver. Yes. Don't miss the one who's giving out the blessings. Yes. Because ultimately he wants you to believe what? Believe that he is the Christ, that he is the son of God, that he came down and he died and paid a price. And he said, whoever shall believe in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. These disciples, they walked with the Lord, and then close, and they walked with the Lord for three years. They knew him. I mean, they slept with him. They ate with him. All kinds of stuff, you know. But in times of trouble, in times where we are feeling afraid, we don't understand, we tend to forget what he's done. Yeah. Yeah. We tend to forget, but how do we not forget, stay close to his heart? Yes, yeah. You know, as you fall in love with someone, you want to be with them. You want to constantly be with them, spend time with them. But if you were to be far apart, you would begin to grow apart. You won't know. You, you will forget the things that you used to love about that person. You will forget the things, the kind things that that person used to do for you, the things that made you feel special. You forget it if you don't spend time with them. So I encourage you, even when the schools are shut down, even if I don't care whatever they do, Seek God with all of your heart. Amen. Seek his face. 
Seek his face. Take that time. Seek his face. Uh, and, and, if, and if you don't see his hand, move and trust his heart. John gave the Lord credit. Give, can you give the Lord the credit? He's been so good to us. Amen. He deserves the unlimited Amen. credit. He deserves the benefit of the doubt when we don't understand his ways, when we don't see it.